favorability toward Wendy Davis is dropping in Texas. As you guys know, uh, she is in uh, a gubernator gubernatorial campaign. She wants to be the governor of Texas. And uh, Greg Abbott is kicking her ass. This is according to a new poll by Public Policy Polling. So it's legitimate. It shows that uh, Greg Abbott has 49% of women uh, favoring him and 53% of men, uh, as opposed to Wendy Davis, by the way, only 41% among women and 32% among men. Um, and then 11% are how not How Greg sure. Abbott leads Wendy Day. How Greg Abbott leads anybody among women is staggering. Yeah. yeah. So, look, we're on Wendy Davis' side, and Greg Abbott, uh, for many different reasons, is a bad guy. Well, we don't agree with him, and then he brings around Ted Nugent, who craps all over the place and stuff. And so we're not a fan of him, and we generally like Wendy Davis. But reality is reality. Unlike the right wing, we don't deny it. So these are not uh, numbers we like, but it's a sad day for us. And so... What's really disconcerting, it's not surprising that a Republican would be beating a Democrat in Texas by 14 points, which is the 51 to 37 lead, right? Um, and, and it might tighten up. There's a long race still, et cetera. But the fact that he's winning by eight points among women is interesting and is, was not the case earlier, right? The numbers have moved against Wendy Davis specifically among women. That's what makes this story interesting. So Anna, give us the numbers on how they moved and then we'll discuss why. All right, so let's take a quick look at the numbers from November. So if you look at uh, the favorable rating uh, for Wendy Davis, among women it's about 39% and uh, among men it's 33%. For unfavorable it's 32% among women and 52% among men. Now fast forward to April and the numbers actually drop significantly. Um, only 32% of women see Wendy Davis as favorable, 33% of men, and 46% of women see her as unfavorable, 48% of men see her as unfavorable. All right, so that's a lot of numbers, but just keep this in mind. She was winning among women 39 to 32 in November. Now, all of a sudden, she's losing among women 46 to 32 in terms of her favorability, not against Greg Abbott, right? So that's a huge switch. Women went from finding her favorable to finding her significantly unfavorable. Now, uh, we know the line of attack the conservatives used against Wendy Davis. They said, oh, she went off to Harvard and left her kids behind, and her husband paid for her education, right, and, and her husband took care know, of the kids. And she was loose with the, and I, I literally mean, like, the core of her story, the story that Wayne Slater essentially broke, who's a great, great, great reporter, was, she, her story wasn't quite right. But the essence of her story was totally right. She was loose with some of the specifics. And I think one of the specifics that hurt her was that she went off to Harvard and didn't care for her kids. But of course, they were responsibly cared for, and she never stopped being their mother, and she came back and visited them. And I, my hunch is that that has hurt her more with women. It's foolish, but it comes from not being able to control your own story, and it comes in politics from just stretching the truth a little bit because it was easier than the specifics of the story which you would have had to get through and which would have taken a little bit of shine off it but you wouldn't have gotten hurt later. So there's two angles there uh, that they use to attack Wendy Davis. One is that she's being a little loose with the facts as Ben said and the other is this issues around gender and having a career and taking care of the kids etc. On the issue of the facts, I, irrespective of uh, the rest of his career, I hated that piece by Wayne Slater. I thought that it was a hatchet job, extraordinaire, okay? She, for example, she said that for a while she lived in a trailer home. And he said, yeah, but only a couple of months. But she never says she lived there for decades or even a couple of years. So in fact, you confirmed that what she said was true, but the way he said it made it seem like, ha ah, ah, ha, stretching the truth. And he did that over and over and over again in that story where you say, wait a minute, you're actually confirming what she said, but you put so much stupid snark behind it, it made it seem as if she was lying when, she, when your facts confirmed that she was not lying. So it was a very frustrating article, and of course the conservatives loved it and went town on it. So I, I, I just, it, the part of that that bothers me is, meanwhile, you have these fake politicians all across the country, Democrat and Republican, but the two examples that really j jump out at me happen to be Republicans, Scott Brown and Fred Thompson, if you remember, in, in Tennessee back in the day. They, they literally have these fake trucks that they use. Right. That Fred Thompson never used that truck outside of the campaigns. He, he would go in a Lincoln town car, if I remember right, to go get into that stupid old truck and then do the campaign things around in the truck and then get back into his Lincoln town car. 
And, but they never reported that. I mean, it came out at one little point. But 99% of the reports were like, oh, there's Fred Thompson in his pickup truck. Like how that guy wasn't, like, how was Fred Thompson not Hollywood Fred Thompson? I exactly, mean, it's literally. Yeah. Exactly. So Scott Brown did things that are similar. So you want to pick apart a politician, you have so much stuff to work with, right, that you don't have to go and nitpick things that end, by the way, that actually prove that she's right. So. So I hated that piece, but they, it helped. So everybody, men and women, the perception that they got, they didn't get this level of detail. They got, ah, she's a liar, right? She's a liar. So that hurts, right? And yeah. then the second part of it is very important because I thought it was gonna backfire on them, and apparently I was wrong, right? I, I thought when a lot of women would then relate to her and go, wait, oh, so her husband supported her, her education, so what? Like, so you, sometimes my husband supports me, are you attacking me? But apparently they didn't perceive it that way. Apparently some, of course not all, right, but a significant chunk perceived it differently, right? And that what they saw was, oh, she went off to go do her career and left the kids behind with the dad. She's a bad mom, I don't like her. I'm dropping and that's so that's so insulting to both men and women because family dynamics are changing significantly. There are plenty of stay-at-home dads, mothers who go out and get their education, start their careers. So what? They're bad people because they're not following the same gender expectations that you like. And, and I think that there are some women. Sorry to interrupt you, no, but I think that there are some women you. that you know might be a little bitter about it. I'm gonna say it, as a woman myself, I, if, with my perspective, I think that there are definitely women that wish that they had the opportunity to do that after they had kids. A lot of women don't. And they see that Wendy Davis had the ability to go off to Harvard, get her education while she had children, and there might be a little bit of jealousy there. I actually think that's true, and I think that they're doing so, themselves a great disservice, because if you think about it, if um, Ted Cruz had gone to Harvard Law School, which he did, uh, I don't know, did he leave his kids behind? I mean, he's from Texas, Harvard is obviously in Massachusetts. I have no idea, has anybody even ever asked them? No, and that's the thing. Has anybody even run an, an expose on where Ted Cruz's kids were when he was at Harvard Law School? I don't know if he even had kids there. No, and, but and, my point is that if, you were, if you're a guy, they don't ask that question. Nobody, if a guy left the kids with the wife to go to Harvard to get a business degree and to get the education that's necessary, He's a good guy. Nobody's even going to be he's like. He's actually looking out for his family right. because what, he wants to provide a better future for his family. And, and the facts of the Wendy Davis story, just to, what I think hurt her, and I don't disagree with you about the the nature or the tone of the Wayne Slater piece, although I don't remember it entirely, other than I remember thinking that she built this story, and the fact that she gave up custody of her youngest child to her then ex-husband because she thought that was was best based on, and because I'm sure he's a excellent father and really good guy and he'd been supportive of her and he deserves credit even with the divorce for being good to the kids so does she but that that would be like oh that's too bad that's gonna hurt her dumb 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 and her daughters of course all came to her defense. actively came to her defense but it looks like to some extent the damage was done yeah and so we'll have to see if she can recover from it. And uh, I don't know, I, I don't know. She's gonna have to react now to these numbers, right? And she's gonna have to figure out a strategy for it. But it appears that the, in this case, what I view to be in some ways malicious attacks against her worked. They were successful. As they do from time to time.